take more than a couple of days to work on. That's turned out to be one of the most productive and effective things we could have ever done in our community. However, within six, well actually even less than six months, probably within three months of doing it, we started getting bug reports in our issue tracker against developer branches that were not only not merged, not released, not even merged in a release candidate branch, weren't even finished by the developer yet and actually said so in the branch. This is not done, don't try to use this. And yet we have people out there actually trying to use it. So that's good. We don't want to lose those people because those are the people who help us find what needs to be better uh, feature-wise, bug-wise, and all of those things. So how do we keep the family happy? This is what we do in our house. We have a gate about this high. A third of the house belongs to the cats. Two-thirds of the house belongs to the dog. That's it. Really simple with cats and dogs. Put a fence up, you're done. Unfortunately, we can't really do that in the asterisk community. You can't say, here, this whole group over here, you aren't even allowed to see all the stuff that we're working on because it's just going to scare you and uh, everything else. So this is what we've been dealing with in a community. Up until very recently, and actually we haven't released asterisk 1.6.0 yet, although it's very, very close. Um, our entire philosophy has been to serve the users who wanted something as stable as possible. So when Asterisk 1.0 was released, it was feature frozen. No new features ever got put in the Asterisk 1.0 branch, ever. We followed the same philosophy with 1.2. We also followed the same philosophy with 1.4. In both cases, that caused significant amounts of tension in the community for a number of reasons. Um, one of the primary ones is as the community gets larger and more people are paying to the are paying attention to the development work that's going on, they wonder why when Ole commits some big improvement to the SIP channel driver or one of us fixes some major performance problem in the X2 channel driver or whatever it is, why they can't actually put that on their system for a year or more. Because we won't put it in a branch that's gets new features. We're putting it in the only branch that gets new features, which is the development version. So that's one of the problems it has caused. The other problem it causes is the people who are most interested in testing that work that you're doing can't actually productively test it. Because the only way they can test it is to download the, re the, the unreleased development version of Asterisk that has a thousand changes in it all over the place, 90% of which they couldn't care less about. And if any one of those causes Asterisk to not work correctly for them, then the part of the system that they would have been able to test, they don't get to test. So we get a shrinking testing community as compared to how many of you were involved with Asterisk prior to when 1.2 was released? So between 1.0 and 1.2, a relatively small number. So you probably all remember that probably something like minutes, but we'll say weeks, after 1.0 was released, nobody, can, nobody used 1.0. They still continued to run the development version up until the day that it got released as 1.2. When that was happening, we get lots of testing. I mean, you would go commit something, and if it broke the system, you'd get 50 emails within an hour saying, this is broken now, you broke this, go fix it. We don't get that anymore because the people are, are the scenarios, the systems that would expose those problems aren't running the development version of Asterisk anymore. So that's caused some tension as well. So I guess I think I've basically covered this here. Um, we have continued to provide support for multiple released versions of Asterisk. Up until 1.6 is released, we still actively support 1.2 and 1.4 with bug fixes and security fixes and lots of other things. So what that means is the people who want the new exciting stuff don't get it often enough to do things with it. They don't get to play with it. They don't get to test it. We don't get to test a better, release a better product because we don't have enough people testing it. So we have made a very significant change in the way we're going to handle new asterisk releases to try to combat this problem and make both groups of users happy. First of all, Asterisk 1.4 is going to continue down the same road it has been. It's feature frozen other than a couple of very, very minor features that we've added to help mitigate some security vulnerabilities that were found. Um, but Asterisk 1.6 is not going to follow that path. Every individual point release of Asterisk 1.6 is going to be a feature freeze point. So when Asterisk 1.6.0 is released, or actually it's already been branched, so it's not going to get any more features at all. But there's going to be a 1.6.1, 1 
and it will actually have new features, and I'll go over what some of those are going to be in the future, or in the later slides here. Um, and what that's going to do, first of all, is get those things in people's hands sooner. However, one of the problems that you run into by doing that is it's very easy for a feature that you add to destabilize some part of the system and cause some other part to not work correctly anymore. And if you tell someone, well, yeah, we added SIP, TLS, and TCP support in 1.6.2, and unfortunately it broke something that was already there, and so the only way you're going to be able to get a fix for that is install 1.6.3, or 0.4, or 0.5. They're going to say, no, because that has even more stuff in it that I don't actually care about. So what we are planning to do, and we'll of course see if this is enough, is that actually the three most recent releases of 1.6, once it's out there, will all get bug fix support. So once 1.6.0 is released, there will be a fourth component, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, whatever, as we fix bugs that are found in that version, not introduced by obviously features being added later. So that someone who has installed 1.6.0, nine, let's say a year from now, on their system may not actually be forced to upgrade to a newer version for a year if they don't need to, if all they need are bug fixes for the version that they have. This strategy is actually working quite well in some other uh, major open source communities that you may have heard of, uh, one being the Linux kernel, for example. Um, they started this philosophy about a year ago where a group of people said, Look, we don't want to have to upgrade every time there's a new version of 2.6 just to get three bugs fixed that were in the last version. So they took it upon themselves to start this process. And so now what you see is that at any given time, there are four active release branches going on, which means that people who just want a bug fixed can go get just that bug fixed and not have to take a whole bunch of other stuff. That then frees the developer to start putting new features in, which they didn't used to be able to do. So, let's talk about what is already in asterisk 1.6 that will be in 1.6.0. Um, the first few slides here are category specific major categories of the system. So, for example, the manager interface, which even though it hasn't been mentioned very much today, is actually a very important part of all these applications that are being built on top of asterisk. People that build GUIs that manage asterisk and the adhesion interface that manages asterisk uses this very heavily. So there's been a lot of work done in this area. We support secure connections, the manager interface now, for example. Um, there's been a lot of renaming work. The manager commands and events that had been added over time were not necessarily done with an eye towards very much consistency. So you would have four different um, actions or four different events that might come out that would report the caller ID associated with the event and their header names would be different or they would format the caller ID in a different way. Well obviously as an application developer that's not a very good thing. So a lot of that has been done. For people who are building um, Ajax applications, web uh, browser client applications, it's actually possible, well it's been possible since 1.4 was released to make direct connections to asterisk over HTTP and issue manager commands and get output back. We've added the ability for that to be encapsulated in the most common form for JavaScript objects. So now it's actually possible to make a application, I use that term very loosely, to, for example, display the list of channels that are open on an asterisk server in about four lines of JavaScript um, by just connecting to the manager interface and issuing the command and getting back an object that JavaScript already knows how to turn into HTML. So that's a, a very useful thing. Another thing that's been, hap uh, that's been in demand for a very, very long time is the ability in the manager to be able to take any two channels that already are up in the asterisk server and just stick them together, disconnect them from whatever they were already connected to and let those go off in their merry way and do whatever they're going to do. Um, people have come up with extremely creative ways of doing this uh, in the past that worked but were extremely difficult to program and not always the most reliable thing. Now it's possible to just pull those two channels and put them together. And the last thing there is uh, quite important as well, and Ole made me noted that I needed to add the last little section of that. Uh, previously, when you connected to the manager interface, there wasn't actually any way to know what version of asterisk you were connecting to, um, unless you checked one specific place that wasn't really very reliable. It's actually possible now. 
um, to actually query what version of asterisk you're talking to and what version of the manager interface it knows how to speak. So as we add more functionality, that's since we're now available, possible to add functionality.